Hi, this is Peter at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial number 84. Now in this tutorial we're going to start off by creating our own little custom camera controls. Now some of the ones that come with Unity are probably more than enough that are going to meet your needs. But I'm going to go over the camera controls just so you can see how to build one and maybe what some of the things uh, in camera controls actually do. So let's go ahead and open up Unity. Now I've gone ahead and I've already created just a rough terrain. I was trying out the new version of the Train Toolkit, which is 1.0.2, I believe. Uh, if you do a Google search, you'll be able to find it. It fixed a few uh, display errors for the textures. Uh, but that's pretty much about it. But you know, if you use the Train Toolkit, I'd recommend going to get it. So anyway, I've made a character, which is just a capsule. It really doesn't matter what you're using. Uh, you could use a cube. You just need something to focus on. And we have our main camera. And I'm just going to use the main camera for now. There's nothing attached to it as far as the script goes. You just have all the basic stuff that comes with a camera. And I'm going to go ahead and create a script. So create C Sharp script. And I'm just going to call it, oh... hack and slash camera and I'll open that up in mono develop and I'll make sure I change the name that is the name correct right all right now I wanted to answer a quick question uh, why do I keep doing things in a new project. Uh, the main reason why I'm doing it is some people, uh, let's take the, the last little mini tutorial we did with the day night cycle. They may not want to go through all of the uh, hack and slash tutorials to make sure they're not missing any part of the, the day night cycle. So by keeping it separate like this, they can just jump in and look at the day night cycle and only do those parts if that's all they want. And the same thing for the camera. Now, I added the exporting and building of a package in the last one and I probably won't do it in this one I just wanted to do it in the last little mini series we did just so you know how to do it and incorporate it into your own uh, your own games so how do I want this camera to work well I just want the basic camera controls for now and my cat's playing with my mic just a sec so basically I just wanted to follow behind the character uh, with an elevated view and looking down at the character at a certain angle. And I wanted to kind of, as the player moves around and you know turns left and right, have it sway a little bit behind the character as the character moves. So we're going to want to expose a variable on you know, how much of a sway we want. Because I'm pretty sure you know what I want for a sway and what you want for a sway are going to be completely different. And another thing I really want is to be able to hold down my right mouse button or some user defined button and be able to move the camera around like you do with the uh, normal first person shooter camera that comes with the unity package so let's go ahead and start actually creating our script I'll head into mono develop and the first variable I'm going to create is one that allows us to have a target for our camera to look at now there's a lot of ways to get your target, some more complex than others. Uh, for now I just want to have the absolute basics. I'm just going to expose a variable for us to drag our target onto our camera script in the inspector. So I'm going to start off with a public transform. And I'm just going to call this target. I'm going to want another public variable for how far I want the camera back from the player. So this will be of type float and we'll call this distance. Well, I should just call this min distance for now. Now this is going to be the default, basically how far the camera sits behind you but maybe if you have your character that has a run animation when he starts running the camera will sort of like swing back a bit so it's a little further back from you 
And if we're going to have that, we'll also want to have one for the max distance. So on the public float, and I'm actually going to change it, call it run distance and walk distance. I'm also going to want a public variable, which would be type float for how high the camera is going to be above the player. So we'll just say height. So we're going to save these off, go back into Unity, and I'm going to drag this onto my camera. So here we go, it's attached to my camera, I want a target, so I'm just going to drag that on. I'm going to start off with my walk distance of oh, maybe two, run distance I'll double it to four, and I'll just set a height of one. I'll just quickly save that in case it crashes. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a debug log statement in here just to check to see if we actually have a target. So I'm going to say if target equals null. I want to send out a debug log warning. And for some reason, my IntelliSense isn't working. I'll fix that in a sec. And I'll just say we do not have a target. All right, and since I'm going to be moving the camera around quite a bit, we're going to want to cache our own transform, but we don't need to make this public. So we're going to make it private, and it's going to be of type transform. And I'm just going to call it my transform. And down on the start method here, right after we've done the debug, I'm just going to say underscore my transform is equal to transform. So this way here, we're caching our transform, which is if we select the camera, this component right here. And we don't have to keep looking it up every time we want to move. So now I want to be able to position my camera at least in the, the starting position. So what I'm going to do is come down here and create a new method. And this one's called void late update. Now this is actually a method that's provided by Unity through Mono Behavior. And basically the way it works is that there's three different updates you can use in Unity. There's your regular update, which is called every frame. Then there's your late update, which is also called every frame, but it's always called after update. And then there's your fixed update where you want to use for physics. It happens a certain amount of every frames. Now we're going to be moving our camera around in the late update method because our character is going to be moving around in the update. And if we had our cameras control, our camera moving around in the update as well, it's possible for that frame or even for several consecutive frames to have our camera trying to move around before it even knows where our character is moving and it can cause a bit of hitching and jumping around. So to avoid that, we'll put it in the late update. Our character moves in the update, so we'll always know that the camera is going to adjust its position after the character has already adjusted its position for this frame. Now, every script that has an update, you can't control you know, which script update is called first. So by using the late update, it's just a, a easy way to ensure that anything you want to happen before your camera moves is done. So let's just move our camera to the default position. So we're going to say my transform dot position is equal to and we'll make a new vector, 3. And we're just going to get our target's position, x. And then we'll want our target's position, y. Now to the y value, we're going to add our height variable. So we'll just add height because we want the camera above them. And then we're also going to take our target position Z and we want the camera behind where the player is so we're going to subtract 
And for now, we're just going to use the walk distance. Let's get that working first. So the walk distance. We'll save that off. There should be no errors, which we don't have. And we'll just start it up and see what happens with the camera. All right, so we can see here that our camera is where it's supposed to be, but we're going to have to adjust a few of the values. We're going to want the camera back a bit more, so I'm going to double my walk distance. That seems like a good spot. And I'm probably going to want to raise the camera as well. Two seems good. So I'm going to change my walk distance. You want to make sure you stop Unity so you can make these edits or they won't save. So my walk distance is now going to be four. I'm going to try a run distance of, well, we'll double it. We'll try eight. If that's too much, we can always adjust later when we get to the run distance. And the height, we liked two. Well, at least I did. All right, so let's save that off. And we'll go back into our script, and we'll try to get the camera to tilt to look at the player next. So the easiest way to get the camera to look at the player is actually to call my transform, which is, of course, the locally cached transform of our camera, and just call the look at property. Now, it's going to want a vector 3 of where to look. There's a few different ways. You can also just put in the target as well in a transform. And you can scroll through all those if you want. But I'm just going to say target. Now, maybe using target.position might be a little bit more efficient. I'm not really sure. But for now, I'm just going to use target. So let's go ahead and we'll start this up. And it should automatically angle the camera at our player. There we go. So if we go take a look, we'll notice that the rotation on the x-axis has been adjusted. Now, some of the really cool, neat things you could do is you could actually put some sort of empty game object above your player. So... Uh, let's make another empty here and I'm going to call this uh, camera target and I'm going to position this on the player so I'll child it to the player and then I'll reset its position we'll zoom in and you can actually take something say like position it right above the player or around the player maybe you want uh, an over-the-shoulder view on either side. I don't. So I'm just going to say right there. So it's just above the player. Now if we looked at the camera again and it's asking for a transform for our target, if you actually use that uh, empty game object we just made and hit play, it'll actually be targeting something just above the player. So it's kind of a little FYI, maybe you don't want it looking directly at your model because maybe uh, the way you have your model set up, it's looking at your model's feet or whatnot. But, you know, take it with a grain of salt. You can use either or. For now, I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, whatever camera target you set up is perfectly fine. And we'll just save that off. So it looks like we're just over 11 minutes, so I'm going to save this video off and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.